what is going to happen with the Fredericksburg area real estate market going into the second half of 2022. This first half of 2022 has been anything but what we're used to over the last couple of years. And I see big, big changes happening in the second half of this year. So if you wanna learn more, stay tuned. So first off, I wanna to touch on one very important factor in the real estate market in the Fredericksburg area. And that is a typical cycle of our real estate market is this. January and February, March and April, the activity increases. Where the peak of buyer activity occurs in April and May, and then it starts to slow down in June and July, where August is the lowest month of real estate activity. That is the slowest month of the year. And this is in a very normal, real estate year, August is the slowest. It's slower than December. It's slower than January. August is the slowest month. So the last two years, 2020, 2021, we did not see the summertime slump that is very normal in our market. So with this a little bit of a slowdown that's happening right now, a lot of people are panicking, but you know what? This is absolutely normal. This is what happens normally. It just didn't happen over the last two years. So before I start my bull predictions for the rest of the year, I want to make sure everyone understands that a little bit of a slowdown in June, July, and August is normal in a very normal year. So I think we're okay. But let me touch on three important areas that I have predictions on for how the real estate market and the real estate industry is going to perform for the remainder of 2020. The first area is with home buyers. So in literally seven minutes from right this moment, the feds are meeting to talk about interest rates and everyone is waiting with bated breath to see what's going on with that. And I purposefully wanted to film this before that announcement came out so that I can make my predictions. And I predict that the feds are absolutely gonna raise the interest rates. Inflation has gotten a little bit out of control. And the only way for it to be controlled is by raising interest rates. But right now, the mortgage interest rates are more impacted by inflation and not necessarily the prime rate that the feds are putting out. So for buyers, interest rates are going up. And what this means is there are going to be fewer buyers out in the marketplace and fewer buyers to compete with. But the buyers who are out there and want to buy a home, you need to beware. Beware of too good to be true mortgage products because I know many of you did not experience the collapse of the mortgage industry back in 2008. But too good to be true mortgage products were sold for several years prior to that happening and you do not want to be a victim of that. So make sure when you get a loan, when you get your mortgage, you're looking at reputable companies, you have people, not robots that you talk to, you have people that you can literally sit down with at a coffee shop here in Fredericksburg to meet with. You're not talking to somebody in a call center overseas or anything like that. So too good to be true mortgage products, please beware of those because they will be selling them. You're also gonna be competing against more cash buyers and more cash buyers are gonna be in the market. Why? It's because real estate is a hedge against inflation. Well, what do you mean, Brooke? What do you mean? Well, cash buyers, if they hold on to their $100,000 cash, just holding on to it, the purchasing power of that $100,000 is going down 8.5% every year. There's a hole in the bucket. There is a hole in the bucket and it's dripping out at 8.5% every single year. Now, if you go to a casino and you play the slot machines, and you play it enough, you will lose everything. But the hole in that bucket is only three and a half percent. This is a bigger hole than a casino, okay? 
So people who have cash are looking for places to put the cash so that it stays at least as valuable as it is. And real estate is an amazing hedge for that. Also, as inflation increases, if you have a fixed rate mortgage on your home, your housing payment stays the same, no matter what happens with inflation, it stays the same. So real estate is a great hedge against inflation. So I see more cash buyers out there because they're looking for places to put their cash so that it will beat inflation. And with real estate, especially if you're buying rental real estate or commercial real estate that you'll be renting out, the uh, dividends, which is basically the monthly rents that you're receiving, is usually a lot more than 8% every single year, 8% of your investment. So you'll see a lot more investors out there buying properties and competing for properties and doing it with cash. With that being said, rents are going to be going up because rents are impacted by inflation. Because the rents are going up, rental properties are going to become more valuable. And so the values of these homes, homes in general, is going to continue to rise. So unlike 2008, where values just started tanking, values are going to continue to rise. So as a buyer, you want to make your buying decision sooner rather than later because you will save on interest and you will save on the purchase price of the home. I'll link something to a video right up here that I did earlier this year saying if you wait till the end of the year, how much more you're going to be spending on that home that you want to buy. So check that out. Sellers, things are changing for you too. First off, right now, there are more listings on the market now than there were at the beginning of December, okay? Like Christmas time, there are more houses on the market right now than there were before. As of Monday morning, there were 400 houses on the market, but about 150 are selling every single week, and we're seeing about 150 or 100 houses come on the market every single week. So inventory is slowly creeping up, which is great for buyers. It gives them more options. Not so great for sellers because there's more competition out there, uh, but the inventory is slowly creeping up. But my prediction is by the end of the year, we're going to see a serious inventory problem yet again. And why is that? It is because people who have their current home, especially if they have it with a mortgage, they probably refinanced or they purchased it and their mortgage rate is probably less than 3%. So why on earth would they wanna sell that house and go buy another house and pay, as of today, just under 5% interest? Watch my video about how that impacts your payments and the value of a home. Uh, but no one in their right mind is gonna to wanna to do that unless they absolutely have to. So in the latter part of this year, coming into the fall, you will start to see inventory numbers go down, down, down. And that is because the only people putting their houses on the market are people who need to put their houses on the market, not people who want to put their houses on the market. So these are folks that are relocating. These are folks that had a um, issue in, in the family, a death in the family, um, a, uh, a divorce. Um, some of them need to downsize. Um, but that's about it. Those are the only houses that are going to be on the market in the latter half of this year. So inventory is going to creep down. Up until that point, sellers need to understand that you are going to need to make sure that your house looks good. You're going to need to make sure it is priced right. You're going to need to make sure you have clear, realistic expectations as far as how long it should take your home to sell and you need to be prepared to actually negotiate with a buyer. I will put a video up here with my tips for sellers going into this next market. So make sure you check that out. Uh, property values are gonna continue to rise, as I mentioned in the buyer section. So I think by the end of the year, the 2022 change in market value is gonna be a positive five to 7%, which is actually a little bit better than normal. So values will continue to rise over the rest of this year. The third thing I wanna point on is industry changes, and I call them industry improvements, actually. And I'm talking about the real estate industry when it comes to real estate companies and real estate agents. 
So first off, agents are going to be leaving the business big time. There are a lot of people who got into the real estate business over COVID. This is a side hustle. This is something they did the great resignation and they left their jobs and they came into real estate. Well, real estate is going to get much harder going into this new market and a lot of folks are not up for that challenge. So the people who renew their real estate licenses at the end of this year, for the most part, those are going to be the big pros. And I'll tell you, 80% of their business is going to be coming from referrals from friends and family and past clients. And that is the most important piece of the whole thing. Some agents got away with really bad service and really not doing a good job for their clients. Those clients aren't going to be referring them in the future. And so those poor agents probably should have made better decisions before, but they're not going to be getting repeat and referral business going into this next year. Also, because of the referral-based economy, teams of real estate agents are going to be becoming the new norm. So the solo real estate agent is going to be kind of becoming the dinosaur out there and teams are going to grow even more faster and better and stronger. So if you're interested in learning more about teams, reach out to me. I do have a team. Um, I'd love to share my thoughts on why I think teams are going to be growing. Another thing that's going to change in the real estate industry is because listings have to be marketed again, real estate agents need to have cash on hand to market their listings. And that's money they're spending before the closing and before they receive their compensation for the sale. So the agents who spent everything and have no reserves are not going to be able to survive unless they take advantage of this next industry change and that is commission advancement companies. So those of you who have a job you know of payday loan companies well that's basically what this is but for real estate agents and commission. So I see commission advancement companies growing like crazy in 2023. And that's just because agents just haven't been able to figure out how to take care of their finances when you could go for two or three months without having without selling a house and you need to be marketing yourself and the house at the same time. So I see commission advancement companies coming back into play at the beginning of this next year. Now, there are some disruptor companies that are out there that are gonna just go out of business or they're going to be firing or getting rid of a number of their employees. And as of this week in filming this, there are two well-known companies that are already starting to lay people off. This is because a disruptor brand just cannot make it in a normalized business environment. Uh, they are very good at the extremes, but when it comes to a more normal real estate market, disruptors really can't perform out there. And one of the big things that fell off the grid completely was this iBuyer program. So Zillow actually stopped buying houses from folks and basically flipping the houses. And they said it's because, quote, they couldn't figure out how to project and predict property values. Isn't that what their whole website is about, this estimate? But anyway, they've admitted to that, so they're out of business with that. But with it taking longer to sell homes, these iBuyer programs are gonna go away. So for those agents who are threatened by that or are worried about that, it's gonna go away. A couple things I wanna say in summary. Buyers, you will have many creative options available to you for financing your next home, and it will still be cheaper than renting. So if you really do want to buy a home, do not fret. There are options out there. One option that will be coming back into popularity is a loan assumption. I will do another video on that in the future, and then I'll come back and I'll link it to this video. Um, so buyers, there'll be many creative ways for you to purchase homes. Sellers, you need to be more flexible and you need to start your selling process a lot sooner than you think. And one of the things you need to start really soon on is getting your house in tip-top shape. 
I have a program called Pineapple Projects. We go into homes and we help renovate and do whatever you need to do ahead of time. No money is paid until the closing. So if you're interested in learning more about Pineapple Projects, I'll have a link in the description below and you can go there. The agent pool is gonna dwindle, but I think that is an improvement in the industry because the real pros are gonna be the ones who actually have a real estate business, not a hobby or a side hustle. And those real estate agents are gonna be the ones that survive the change in the market. And some companies are gonna go out of the market, but for most of you, that's not gonna be a really big deal. It actually might be a breath of fresh air for you. In ultimate summary, it's gonna be okay, guys. The second half of this year is gonna be perfectly fine. Closings on houses happen every single day. No matter the location, no matter the market, no matter what interest rates are doing, no matter what's going on with disruptors, no matter what's happening in the world, real estate closings happen every single day and they will continue to happen throughout the rest of this year. So if you or someone you know is thinking about buying or selling in the Fredericksburg area before the end of 2022, I would love to make that connection. Click the link in the description below and you can schedule a call today. Or if you're interested in just gathering more information, you can sign up to get our seller guide, our buyer guide, our millennial guide, and our first time home buyer guide. Those are all available for you free. So just go to my website and check it out. Hope you guys have a great rest of your summer and second half of 2022, and I'll be excited to give my predictions for 2023 in December. And at that time, we'll see how these predictions panned out. I'll see you next time.